So what we have to do is develop a rule when we have some functions that are multiplied. So we have to have a product rule. Because I need a way to handle this derivative. I need to take the derivative of two functions that are multiplied. Okay? And guys, it is not just the derivative of f of x times the derivative of g of x. It does not work that way. All right? So we're going to do the proof the same way. We're going to work a proof here. We're going to have to figure this out. So I'm going to define a capital F function. That is the little functions multiplied. All right? And I'm going to do the definition of derivative. I'm going to do this proof. I'm going to find F prime of x by taking the limit as h goes to 0. All right? Of capital F x plus h minus capital F of x all over h. All right? And what we're going to get at the end is going to fill in this blank at the very tip top. Right? We're going to have to do this proof out. Now, this gets ugly again. Equal. Limit as h goes to 0. Again, function notation. I'll do this in green so you can see it coming out. f of x plus h, right? Times g of x plus h. Minus, and then I'll do this in red. f of x times g of x, right? And I'll put parentheses, I suppose. But the negative comes there. Fill all over h. And again, Okay, Marley. All right. So here I am. Guys, there's nothing to expand. There's nothing to factor. Do you guys see it? It's kind of a damn disaster. you guys agree? Now, even I have to look at my notes to make the next trick. Because I'm going to have to somehow separate this to make a rule. All right? got to find derivatives. And right now, there's none in here to be had. So... I'm going to add something in the middle, all right, that's going to give us some transportation, all right? And the transportation becomes this. I still have the lead green term, okay? And I'm going to get rid of the time symbol. I know they're multiplied. And at the very end, I still have the very red symbol, okay, f of x, g of x, okay? And I still have this all over h. You guys see I just took those two, right, and separated. And now I'm going to stuff in the middle. You guys agree I could go plus a minus a if I wanted to, right? Because a minus a is zero. I'm not going to do a. But I am going to do this. I'm going to do minus f of x plus h times g of x plus f of x plus h times g of x, which are exactly the same term. All right? And I'll write this so you can read it. Exactly the same term, just opposite sign. Now, for you guys who are really calculus nuts, you got to look here and say, why would I possibly have done that? All right? Well, I now see some things that I can do to help pull this out. If you look right here, guys, you guys see that f of x plus h is common in the numerator? And what's left? g of x plus h minus g of x over h. Ah, g prime. On the other side, if I circle this, right, what's common? Ah, g of x is common. That could come out. And what's left? f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Ah, f prime. The derivatives are here. We just got to do a little math. Or a lot of math, and all truth in this. A lot of math. I'm going to break the limit and do what I just said. In the first two terms, I'm going to pull out g of x plus h, which leaves me f of x plus h minus, oops, I lied. I'm going to pull out f of x plus h. I'm sorry, the common. The next one's the other one. f of x plus h is common here and here. My bad. All right? Times, that leaves g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. I'm going to move the limit over here and say plus limit as h goes to 0. I'm going to factor out the g of x. And that leaves me what? That leaves me f of x plus h minus f of x in those second two terms all over 
H. All right. We should be able to recognize that this is G prime. We should recognize that this is F prime. What happens when I put zero into this? I can take the limit and I put zero in here. F of X plus H be just becomes what? F of X. So my rule becomes f of x times g prime of x plus g of x times f prime of x. I just developed this product rule. And everybody, this gets a little confusing. It does. So if I go very back to the top, I want the derivative of f times g. Right? A two, a, some sort of composite function. It is f of x times g prime x plus g of x f prime x. Alright? So the question becomes where does that have uses, right? How does that look? Alright? So let's do one. Let's use our rule. Now, I want to do a problem where you guys can see the answer before the end is here. All right, so I'm going to write down the rule on the next. Oh, I don't know. Uh, oh, you mean this rule I'm putting on the board right now? Hang on, we're going we're to keep it always in our sight. So here's the rule we just developed, guys. And if you don't see a pattern, a pattern here, you should look harder. All right, and look, and I'm being careful to write it just like the book, so you can look there too later on. Okay. F of, the derivative of f times g is equal to f times g prime plus g times f prime. All right. So let's define a function. Let's make it easy. All right. How about six x cubed? times 7x4. Now, first of all, you would be an idiot long term to do this with the, the rule we just put on the board. We're doing this so you can see how it works. If you had this in real life, I would hope, based on the power rule, you guys would say, Mr. Anderson, I can simplify this to this, right? And then I can find the derivative in about three seconds. 7 times 42, right? Which is... Uh, 280 plus 14, 294x6, is that right? 42 times 6. So everybody, we know the answer. The answer is going to be 294x6 when we're done. It has to be, right? This is the, so you guys are just asking about this, this is the power rule. We just use the power rule, all right? If I put that in green, that's ddx of x to the n power is equivalent to n times x to the n minus 1. We just did the power rule. If there's a constant, you just throw the c outside. The c was the 42. All right? We know this. All right. That said. Coach you want me to leave that up? Oh, no, not that. That's red. Right. Oh, I'm not changing the red stuff. All right. Okay. Now, I know the answer. I'm going to make it smaller, okay? Because I don't want to do it with the easy rule. I want to prove our other rule. We want to get used to the idea of how this looks on something we can manage. Because this is going to get hard to manage in bigger functions later. All right? So, I know the answer when I'm all done. It better be 294x to the 6. Does everybody see that I purposely set this up so I could define this as f of x and this as g of x. You guys see that? All right. I'm going to write these out because I'm going to want to fill in some blanks up here. Yeah. All right. So everybody, do you guys read f of x? And for, I'm going to define f of x, the capital one is f of x times g of x. I'm going to define f of x. I should be able to do two red ones while the announcement's run. You should be able to fill in these blanks for me in about two seconds.
So everybody, you should be able to fill these in, right? We look at 6x cubed, everybody, 6 times 3, how about 18x squared? 7x to the 4th, you guys agree, 28x cubed. All right. Now it's plug and chug time at the top, right? I want to get ddx of 6x cubed times 7x to the 4th. That equals, all right, well, f of x is 6x cubed, right, times, I just filled in this, times what, times g prime, what's g prime, 28x cubed, plus, what's g, g was 7x to the fourth, what is f prime, f prime is 18x squared, we'll see how my math is today. 6 times 28, 120 plus 48, 168 x cubed, plus 70 plus 56, about 20, 126 x, not x cubed, x6, x3, x3. What's 168 plus 126? Hmm, I bet it's 294 x to the sixth. And we just did the product rule on something easy. We would never do this in real life. If you guys do this on a test, you'll never finish. All right? When we can do the power rule, we do. The product rule is obviously more complicated. You guys agree? All right? So the question is, is why bother, right? That seems like something stupid. I don't know if I'd ever want to do this, Mr. Anderson. Well... We do it a lot because what's coming up is we are going to start defining functions like this. And guess what? That has two distinct functions, doesn't it? F of x and g of x. So we're going to have to be masters of the power rule. We also will have to be masters of the quotient rule, which is even more mixed up than the power rule. The power rule, I think, is kind of easy to memorize. I really do. And in fact, a lot of times what I do for notation, guys, is I don't write out everything. I would do this. Long term, and listen, on the second, third, fourth, and fifth test, not the first one, you'll have to state this out over and over and over. I ask, the first ten questions are always the same. This is one of those ten questions. I give you this, and I expect you to fill in from the, you know, I expect you just to fill in what it is, all right? And I just do it the same way every single time. I just want to write it. I write f g prime plus g f prime. I like having the g's by each other. All right? And I just know it doesn't matter what order they're in. No, because it's addition. All right? It helps if you write it this order. All right? It helps if you write it. Sometimes I've seen books do it a different way, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay? That is our rule. Some books, because the quotient rule uses the top differently, I've seen some books write it this way, all right? And the nice part about the red way is it's unique, but if you write it this way, do you guys agree this is the same thing? All right? Some books write it this way because this part looks similar to the quotient rule that we'll do tomorrow, 305. We're not going on. The quotient rule, guys, if you want, I don't care which way you do it, the quotient rule will end up being this tomorrow. All right, it's biology time. Guys, at all of me, when I say it's biology time, you memorize it. For no simple purpose outside of knowing that, you know, oxygen is, you know, 16 atomic mass. Atomic number. Whatever. The point is, we got to know these. And I, it is the easiest 20 points on a 250, 300 point test. You know, think about it. There are 10 questions every time worth 10 points. So if the test is worth 400 points, that's 25%. This is 25% of your test grade. Just 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? Mr. Anderson, I have one more question. Yeah.
They don't, it doesn't matter. You could just addition. Yep. So if you want to write, you said G prime F plus F prime G. I don't care. As long as it, you know, it's a sum. So you can do about anything you want. Okay? Alright. 